second chance. Right. And so, and what we need to do now is just at the end of this method, action listener, put it in, I need a semicolon. So that's what I'm There's something wrong here. Yeah, action comes in here. Action event E. Right. So, so this method takes an argument and it's action event argument, and we can call it to access it whatever we want, and we just call it E. So if we run this program now, because we've added an action listener to it. If we go file, print name, Charles. So we've actually got this menu doing something with an action listener. And if I put an action listener onto this one, um, but you can imagine, you can imagine every single one of these has got the, if every single one of these have got their own action listener, how many action listener you think is stored in memory? and it's listening all the time. Well, it's better practice to just to use one if you can. And so, I wanted to show you this. Um, let's see if I can take all this away. Yeah, because you'll see it in textbooks. Now, what I'm going to do is F, that's the name of this class, and the frame, and we've already implemented it. And this is the one that's getting used for everything in this class. And the way to actually the way to actually do it is to create a G menu. Um, G menu item and give it a name. So this is going to be type G menu and we're going to call it item it's going to equal and we're going to cast it as a J menu item and what we're going to do is we're going to use the action event E and because it's got methods this is the event that's going to be fired when we click that um, menu item and so e dot get source so when we fire an event we can actually tell where the source comes from by this method here and so this is what item is going to hold and so if we do another if statement and in here In here we use item. The name that we call this this object that we created, which is gates get so it's whatever argument is fired, comes in here and it will equal this item. And so <sighs> equals this item, yeah. And so what we can do and what we can do is the name of the get item um, is what is it again? Print is that right? Yeah, it's print. So if we fire, if what I've got one more thing to do is print. This is inside main. So um, print where did we we done it here, right? This is inside main, so this is only local to main. Outside main it doesn't exist. So what we have to do is we have to declare this before um, main, make it global, and then the whole program will have access to it. 
and so that's what I'm going to do is go to the beginning of the class and to menu item we'll type this changes to print so we've created it static because it's going to be um, used inside main and it's j menu item and print and so then we actually use it in here but because it was declared here bef at the beginning of the class it's global to the whole class and so now we can use it down here and so what will happen now if we save the program run go to file print name and what you'll see is it's you've clicked the there button right so that's not what's going to happen okay let's find out what's went wrong yeah nothing's went wrong at all um, that's what's inside here because I've cut and paste so so what it is is we're to print out um, my name Charles yeah it's just a because um, I copied this and um, I changed it I changed the code but I didn't change change what was in the print so this time fingers crossed it will work it's open shall there you go and so what this actually means this actually means that we can actually use one action listener for all the menus and so this is going to make the program more efficient so I wanted to show you both of them and that's what I've done and we can add as many items as want and we can nest the items and menus etc and so so that's that's um, J menus that's menu pass and menus for your program so I hope that's been of some use to you um, and so again thank you for your time